would like to welcome y'all to worship here at Tap United Methodist Church. If y'all would please stand for our first hymn, Blessed Assurance. Yeah. 
may be seated. Let us pray. Dear Lord, we're thankful for this time that we can come together and celebrate and study your word and sing your praises in your house. And Lord, we'd ask that you be with us this morning, that your Holy Spirit would reside in each and every heart. And we look forward to the day when David and Melody can return safely from Jamaica and continue shepherding this flock. And Lord, we're thankful for the uh, blessings you bestowed on our church and on our families. And we'd ask that you watch over and protect us. All these things we'll ask in your name. Amen. Uh, a few things before we get started. Welcome and announcements. Do you have anything that you would like to say about yesterday? Well, <laughs> we survived two softball games and we did not hurt ourselves. <laughs> represented well. We had uh, tasteful shirts, team tap, in the form of a cross that were purple. And uh, we, uh, uh, tasteful names. <laughs> so uh, it was a great thing. I don't know who won, Heather, but you're going to have to print that name in the paper. Team tap will not be the champion. I'm sorry. Uh, and speaking of sports, we've got a celebrity in our midst this morning. Uh, Kyle Atkinson, it's good to have you back in the Southern Diamond. <laughs> I can't imagine what an experience like that must be like, but the good news is you're going to play for the Brazos Valley Bombers this weekend, or this summer. Man, if you can't get to heaven, it's just one step right outside, right? <laughs> Congratulations, Kyle. We're proud of you. We're proud of you. Uh, the uh, flowers on the altar today are donated to uh, the glory of God in honor of Heather Russell and uh, family by Glenn and Wilbur Howe. Exercise class uh, here in the gym. Tomorrow and Thursday at 9 o'clock, uh, online Bible study, Tuesday night at 7, and uh, Wednesday morning Bible study at, at 10 a.m. for the Matthew and Kathy. Okay, y'all going to be here? I'm heartbroken. Okay, I got you. Okay, so no, no prayer meeting this week on Wednesday at 10. Prayer shawl meeting group will meet Wednesday at 1 o'clock. And uh, are there any other announcements, uh, any other activities going on? Finance is going to be uh, Tuesday night at 6. Finance, here, Brenda. Finance committee meeting here uh, Tuesday night at 6 o'clock. So, other than that, nothing else? God loves all of us. Thank goodness, Pat. <laughs> Thank goodness. Y'all can remain seated while we sing uh, in the garden.
Our Lord Jesus did not leave us without his guidance when he ascended into heaven.
bestowed up upon us. Let us not focus on the things that we don't have, but the things that you have provided to us. And Lord, we'd ask for the ones that are absent from our presence this morning, whether they're on vacation or homesick or, or traveling, that you would bless them in some way today, Lord, as they worship to celebrate their anniversary and all the the blessings that you have provided to them during their years of marriage. And Lord, we'd ask that you be with our country, that you would turn us around, that we would turn back to you and seek guidance and counsel. Lord, all these things we'll ask in the name of your Son, who taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name.
He will glorify me because it is from me that he will receive what he will make known to you. All that belongs to the Father is mine. That is why I said the Spirit will receive from me what he will make known to you. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks. 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 trusted 
news source and maybe not widely used today, but everyone usually refers to something else to go to today. What is it called on the internet? What's it called? It's kind of similar to this. Wikipedia. Wikipedia. Is it a trustworthy news source? Yeah. <laughs> Y'all stealing my thunder. Not really, because anyone can contribute. Yet both of these resources are considered a starting point to begin your research. It's not the ending point, it's a starting point. You should use books, articles, and other information to confirm your knowledge and expand your knowledge of the subject. The amount of information that we have access today to is overwhelming. Yet there seem to be many in our society who continue to have trouble processing this information and arriving at the truth. Why do we struggle with the truth? It arrives in all manner of ways at any time of day, and normally we have our favorite go-to sources that we consider the ones that, that are reliable. But some information sources are satirical in nature, and they're not to be trusted at all. Other sources are designed to make money, drive traffic, or to foster banner and even vigil, so you must consider the source. Editorial pages are full of opinions that may or not may not represent factual sides or factual sides on both sides of the argument. They may provide just enough information to get you to sway their support to their side or enrage the offended. And I often order books to read solely based on the author. Maybe I like the previous book of theirs or Maybe I admire their accomplishments and a friend referred it to me or gave it to me or maybe something else. But there's always been one or two books that I've rejected based on the author. I shot the messenger. One of those books was Mr. Peabody's Apples. Y'all know who wrote Mr. Peabody's Apples? Come on now, Linda, you know, don't you? Madonna. What does Madonna have any business writing a book? But it's a good book. It's a good book. And then there's another called Men Are From Mars, Women Are From Venus. Okay? Pretty good book, right? Yeah, but I discounted the author. Why? He's divorced. Ah, but here's the deal. Maybe if that guy's divorced and he knows all the pitfalls I'm fixing to fall into, maybe he's got some good ideas for me. And then there's another guy that declared bankruptcy that had written a thing called Financial Peace University. Y'all know that guy's name? Dave Ramsey. Dave Ramsey. What can a guy that's declared bankruptcy teach me about finances? Plenty. Plenty. It all changed for me with Dave Ramsey. Who better to tell you how to avoid bankruptcy than the guy that was actually in it? The point I'm trying to make is why are we so willing to shoot the messenger when they say something or take a stand that we disagree with in regards to anything, the knee-jerk reaction to any truth is to discredit the messenger in some form or fashion. Last week was Pentecost Sunday. The disciples were hiding in a house when a great wind rushed in. This was not rehearsed. It wasn't, they weren't prepared. The outpouring of the Holy Spirit came upon them and the 12 disciples, and then they spoke to the people the wonderful deeds of God. According to Acts 2 4, they were filled with the Holy Spirit and they began to speak with other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. The Holy Spirit does not speak on his own behalf, he speaks on only what he hears. And so it must be with us. Have any of y'all ever had a conversation with Lydia Wilson? <laughs> I walked into Miss Ann Stone's house last Monday. To, to do some things and she was babysitting Lydia. I felt like I was having a conversation with a 27 year old woman. You know why? That's all she hears. She's not around any other kids. She's around Ann Stone. She's around Carolyn Cotton. She's around Sue Ellis. She's around Heather Russell. She's around Jack Abson. She's around all these grown people all the time so she doesn't know any other way to talk. And that's the same way it is with the Holy Spirit. He's in the company of God and Jesus all the time. He doesn't know anything other than to repeat what he hears. And so it is with us. What we teach must not originate in us. We must, must be revealed to us by Scripture, by the Holy Spirit. So many times we think we know the truth and then the Holy Spirit speaks to us and we try to bully in our own ways and thoughts. Whereas if we just listen to him, he would reveal the truth to us. 
I do not know that the Holy Spirit has ever been as real to me as God and Jesus, but he should be. He's a leader. He's a guide. He has personality and characteristics of a person. He has intellect and reasoning like people do. He exerts his influences upon the consciousness of the child of God. He does not drive. He does not compel. He does not force. He does not carry us. We can and usually do refuse his leadership, but if we follow him, we must exert ourselves. Well, how do we exert ourselves? We read the Bible. We read the Bible. Stop me if you've heard this one before. Then you will know the truth and the truth. John 8, 32. Yes, to set you free from what? Your mental habits, your insecurities, your deficiencies, your intimidations, your fears, your worry. To me, there is no greater story of truth setting a man free in the Bible than 2 Samuel chapter 12, verses uh, 1 through 14. And I apologize, but I'm going to read this with a little bit of effect this morning. <clears throat> the Lord sent Nathan to David. And when he came to him, he said, There are two men in a certain town, one rich and the other poor. And the rich man had a very large number of sheep and cattle. But the poor man had nothing except one little lamb. He had bought, he raised it, he grew up with him and his children. He shared his food, he drank from his cup, and he slept in his arms. He was like a daughter to him. But now a traveler came to the rich man. But the rich man refrained from taking one of his own sheep or cattle to prepare a meal for the traveler who had come to him. Instead, he took the ewe lamb that belonged to the poor man and prepared it for the one who had come to him. David burned with anger against the man and said to Nathan, As surely as the Lord lives, the man who did this deserves to die. He must pay for that lamb four times over because he did such a thing and had no pity. Woo! Uh-oh. David has thrown the door wide open for Nathan. David had no idea that Nathan was talking about him. So since David has thrown the door wide open, Let's see what Nathan has to say. Then Nathan said to David, You are that man. This is what the Lord, the God of Israel, says. I anointed you king over Israel. I delivered you from the hands of Saul. I gave your master's house to you and your master's wives into your arms. I gave you the house of Israel and Judah. And if all this had been too little, I would have given you even more. Why did you despise the word of the Lord by doing what is evil in his eyes? You struck down Uriah the Hittite with the sword and took his wife to be your own. You killed him with the sword of the Ammonites. Now therefore the sword will never depart from your house because you despised me and took the wife of Uriah the Hittite to be your own. And this is what the Lord says, out of your own household I'm going to bring calamity upon you before your very eyes. I will take your wives and give them to one who is close to you, and he will lie with your wives in broad daylight. You did it in secret, but I will do this thing in broad daylight before all Israel. Then listen carefully to David's response. And then David said to Nathan, I have sinned against the Lord. What do you think the mood in that room was like? I bet it was total silence. Not a word said. Nathan the prophet has just accused David of adultery and murder. The king has been called out. Yet there's no kicking or screaming from David demanding that his sins, adultery and murder, be normalized. There's no corporations, no celebrities, no advocacy groups that came to David's defense to justify his behavior. Israel did not dedicate a month to bring attention to his sins. He simply replied, I have sinned against the Lord. He was convicted by Nathan the prophet. David knew the difference between right and wrong, but instead of the Holy Spirit leading the truth, it was Nathan. So if we know the difference between right and wrong, who's going to be able to convict us of our sin? It's going to be the Holy Spirit. The devil is the father of lies. If we refuse to be led into the truth by the Holy Spirit, we will continue to be deceived by Satan, his henchmen, and his world system. 
The Spirit will never do anything or say anything that is contrast to the written or living Word of God. Let that sink in. He's not ever going to say anything that wasn't told to him first. But that is not certainly not what our society would have you believe. There are people that bear titles such as pastor, bishop, or minister that would have you believe that God has given them a directive or a mandate, if you will, to violate certain tenets of the Bible. The world questions the truth of the Bible, claiming it is a human work filled with error. Jesus tells us otherwise. He promises that the Spirit would remind us of his words and he would guide us into all truth. And that is why Jesus said the Spirit will receive from him what he will make known to us. Don't shoot the message just because you don't like the message. On the day of Pentecost so long ago, the disciples allowed the Holy Spirit to speak to them. With little to no resistance, we should be as ready to do so ourselves, not worrying about what we'll say, only relying on what the Holy Spirit will say through us. When I was in high school getting ready to apply for admission to college, there were a few things that I was required to do. I had to take the SAT test and the ACT test. Colleges wanted to know if I was ready for higher education. Due to my high school rank, my minimum score to get into one university was, get ready for this, 750 on my SAT. The Air Force Academy required me to take both tests, and I can't remember the scores they required, but that's not important. One thing I affirmed with these tests was I was stronger in math than I was in any other subject. The one and only time that I took the SAT, I made a composite score of 1110, 660 on my math and 450 on my English. I always liked math because it was non-negotiable. There may be more than one way to solve a word problem, but at the end of the day, the answer would always be the same in math because you only have absolutes. Five times five will always be the square root of 144 will forever be, and any number multiplied by zero is zero. Woo! These are absolutes. They are truths. Then there's that pesky English. <laughs> Looking around the sanctuary this morning, I've got some pretty intelligent people in the audience. Can you spell the word blue? Can you spell it? B L U E. Great.
scene, the playing, the performance. They're certainly far better than some churches that are double our size, but you know why they're so remarkable? They're all reading on the same page of music. Each one of them play a different instrument. We got a drum, we got a trumpet, got a bass, got a piano, and then we got two women that sing. But they're all reading off the same sheet of music. The length of notes, the key in which it's written, the time signature, and most importantly, the notes on the page reveal a wonderful accomplishment when everyone divides by the truth. If you finger a wrong note, if you come in too early, if you play during a rest, if you hold on to a note too long, everybody else reads off the same piece of paper music and immediately knows. And so it is with our church. Each one of us have different gifts. We each play a different part. But every one of us abides by the truth and the absolutes of the word of God. God doesn't mince words. Jesus was not ashamed of the gospel, and the Holy Spirit can do nothing but repeat what he hears. They're all working from the same book. With the Trinity, there is an eternal voluntary relationship of love and fellowship, each working harmoniously for the glory and the honor of others. And so it is with us. And so it is with us. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit.